as we proceed to investigate uh, forms of knowledge that have come down to us from the past, we become aware that our forefathers had a tendency to group uh, various types of phenomena without due consideration for the possibility of variant causes. It was their general thinking that a broad area of similar effects could be attributed to a single cause. And as a result of that, we still have much to do in the search for the several answers which bear upon conditions apparently similar. We are trying to find the reasons for things. And many things which appear the same have different reasons or different degrees of reason behind them. This applies not only to physical health, but to a number of other situations. Not so many years ago, for example, we considered the common cold and its various phases to be one ailment. Now we strongly suspect that there are many ailments involved. The symptoms are similar, but the causes of these symptoms are not identical. The same applies to the problem of dream phenomena. There can be more than one reason for a certain type of dream. There can be more than one explanation for what we would now regard as a small group of related experiences. Therefore, when we come to consider the premonitional type of dream, the dream that seems to have within it a warning of some nature, and this dream proves to be prophetically accurate, we immediately try to pin down one explanation that will explain all of the mystery. This we cannot factually do, and therefore under the general heading this evening, we have to examine a number of related possible causes for what appears to be a very single and definite occurrence. Premonitional dreams and things of this nature arise from one broad group of causes and from other groups also, but let us consider one group first, but not as the exclusive group. One group arises in man's natural tendency to be fearful. There is something within our nature particularly if we are depressed or have a tendency to be neurotic or to suffer from some psychological pressure. There is a tendency for us to expect the unfortunate. This expectation passes through a number of different degrees according to the temperament of the individual. Nearly all warning dreams and most prophetic dreams have a tendency to center upon disaster or uh, trouble of some kind. We are not likely to prophesy something in the form of an unexpected good. We are more likely uh, to be afraid of an impending evil. Taking, for example, say a hundred dreams or experiences or even strong intuitional pressures about something, we can come up with quite a variety of calamity warnings or forebodings. In the course of years, for example, there has been a large group of dreams 
relating to natural disaster. Almost every year, someone predicts a disastrous earthquake or flood. We have, for instance, been suffering for the last 50 years from a continuously maintained prophecy, for example, concerning the possible submergence of the entire Atlantic seaboard of the United States. We have also gone through countless uh, occasions with people relating to more immediate disasters. There is hardly a mail that comes today that does not bring some worried question about whether a bomb will drop on Paducah or whether uh, the Mississippi is going to overflow and become an ocean. This type of thinking is proverbial. Uh, for the last 2,000 years, we have had proverbial and regular end-of-the-world frights and fears. These are often accompanied by dreams. Sometimes they are forewarned by dreams. Now, what is the possibility of this type of dream? But before we go into that, one other point I, would, I should make. Up to the present time, probably 95% of these dreams of portending disaster are not fulfilled. The majority of the incidents predicted do not occur. Yet the individual finding that they do not occur seems to lose no enthusiasm for his tendency, and having failed in one prediction makes two more. Of course, in many instances, uh, predictions or forewarnings, if held long enough, about a certain condition or in relation to a certain probability may very well ultimately be fulfilled. I know that for nearly 20 years a well-known English prophet annually announced the death of King George V. In the 20th year he was right. And of course, under those conditions, the preceding 19 years were merely minor errors in calculation. The uh, principle remained untouched as far as this person was concerned, and he promptly went to work predicting the death of the next king. This type of situation seems to indicate a man's natural tendency under certain conditions to fall into very negative attitudes. Now, we also must bear in mind that many persons coming under the influence of rather morbid statements may carefully nourish them and later release them as part of their own psychological pressure. We read something, we hear something, and because it is direful, it sort of clings to us because perhaps we have a slight tendency to the same attitude. In time, this subconsciously accepted uh, prophecy or premonition or record uh, comes out again as though it originated in ourselves or perhaps originated in some large circumstance. If it comes out as a remembrance of our original source of information, it makes no serious situation. But if it suddenly takes visual form and appears as a vision, or in a dream sequence, it suddenly seems to be more important. The majority of this type of dream is not fulfilled. It represents, as we say, a tendency obviously psychological to have a sense of impending trouble. It can be based, of course, on broad generalities of life. The individual whose life has been troubled may broadly assume that his future will be troubled. And persons in various anxieties 
can precipitate these anxieties as formulas and become even more depressed as the result. I think, therefore, that we must assume that one cause or source of the so-called premonitional uh, announcement of evil arises in our natural subconscious expectancy of trouble. And if we become less optimistic, if our own psychological balance is depressed in one way or another, uh, this possibility of trouble is magnified and augmented. Another type bearing closely upon this one is that the individual develops some kind of a religious or philosophical fixation relating to the possibility of trouble, and that this uh, fixation becomes too dominant in his own life. We, knew for, we know, for example, that medieval man was under the opinion uh, that the world might end at any moment. And as uh, various millennial epics arose, which seemed possibly to coincide with this thinking, these persons did have vision. They did see what might be considered the last judgment. They beheld mysterious spectacles in the air and in their own psyches, which looked like the end of the world. But this type of premonition arose very clearly from religious conviction, intensified by the corroboration of others of similar conviction, and even by the preachments of respected authorities. Thus, if a fear mechanism is implanted in man, he has a tendency to enlarge upon it, uh, to become continually expectant toward some negative circumstance. This type of premonitional warning has really no essential, essential validity. It simply is the individual interpreting circumstances from a negative point of view, or perhaps taking on some formula and working with it a little too desperately. We know, for example, that for a number of years, pyramid prophecies were attempted. Uh, these uh, were based upon certain calculations that it was assumed had been incorporated into the structure of the great pyramid of Giza. And in measuring these various uh, areas and combinations of mathematical patterns, uh, efforts were made, or believed to be made, uh, to indicate major changes in human affairs. War, disaster, floods, um, collapses of civilizations and cultures were based upon myths, scratches, small holes, and uh, varying grains in the stone of the wall of the inner passageway of the pyramid. Obviously, you had to believe the basic premise in order to read the uh, story as the author explained it or interpreted it. But many people became very fearful over some of these impending possibilities, and fearfulness in turn, affecting the subconscious, caused visual uh, occurrences in sleep, seemingly to sustain this particular point of view. Now the juxtaposition of a premonition or a fear in relationship uh, to world events means that in a certain percentage of cases this type of dream would have a measure of fulfillment. If we expect certain things and interpret out of ourselves the intensities of world situations, something within ourselves, if it is only common sense, will indicate that many of our courses of action would reasonably lead to serious difficulties. We may therefore become fearful of things obvious and reasonable, and then dramatize this fearfulness 
in the shape of some impending or presumed disaster. There is a certain degree of fulfillment always, because if we predict that man will be in trouble, he cannot be wrong very long. He has a decided tendency to get into trouble, and it hardly requires a psychic perception to realize that many of our actions can only end in trouble. Thus, perhaps, we are secretly telling ourselves the kind of consequences that are inherent in our own actions. This type of explanation, however, does not cover the entire ground by any means. But it does, perhaps, cover a certain superficial group of conditions which are present and which undoubtedly are responsible for the fact that so many of these predictions fail utterly to materialize, and also to explain why so many important events go unpredicted. This is a, a situation which we cannot deny. I know individuals, for example, who spent practically every hour of their sleeping time dramatizing uh, impending trouble, and yet missed entirely a very serious one uh, that occurred in the course of their uh, period of dramatization. The same thing occurs in so-called psychic situations. Uh, I know an individual, for example, who really believed that psychically he was in tune with just about everything. He announced wars and pestilences and plagues and uh, practically every type of disaster. But he was sitting in Long Beach when the earthquake occurred there, and he hadn't the slightest idea it was coming. He missed a very good bet, which he might otherwise have been able to use to prove his point. So many things predicted do not occur, and many things which no one anticipates actually happen. For this reason, we must doubt a certain area of this type of occurrence. Now we pass from that to perhaps the second type. But in order to explain this type, we must uh, philosophize a little more about man. What are the reasons, perhaps, why the individual is a little pessimistic and inclined to feel that evil is ever nigh unto him, is because down inside the deepest parts of his own conscience, he has decided that he is honestly entitled to trouble. He knows that he himself has so conducted his own affairs uh, that they are not in order, not secure, and are therefore subject uh, to innumerable shocks. Consciously, we may defend against this, but subconsciously, uh, the truth will out. And persons who have planned badly, invested poorly, uh, been imposed upon too easily, inwardly realize that this type of circumstance must cause trouble ultimately. Consequently, they may warn themselves. They cannot warn themselves consciously, because most persons are unwilling to admit in their conscious moves that they make mistakes. But the subconscious part of them, which is a little more honest and a better record keeper, will very often warn them uh, of impending inevitable. And as the uh, dream symbolism is seldom literal, uh, the dream that accompanies this type of warning will be emblematic and will present one kind of a disaster to conceal or imply another. A person whose investments are going badly may dream that he is drowning in a very stormy sea. What nature is trying to tell him is that he is insecure, that the things he is doing, the things he is doing are not according to his own common sense. 
but he has come under the glamour of the hope of high reward for small effort, and this is more than his conscious mind can safely combat. Therefore, consciously he goes on his way, hoping against hope. But inside of each of us is a realist that can and does face facts. This realist may whisper in our ears that trouble is approaching. And in order to tell us this, it may have to use some almost psychic means due to the locking of our objective attitude. Most persons are much more set in their ways than they realize. And having done something badly, they must defend their own actions. They must justify themselves. And in this process of building elaborate intellectual, intellectual protections against their own failings, they become so burdened with false thinking that they cannot see clearly or straighten out the tangled chain of circumstances. But the subconscious part of man, because it is not so glamorized, may in time or in the course of the situation come out with the facts. This leads us to suspect that there is a fact finder in man. It represents a level of detached judgment uh, which is not always available to him in his normal conduct. It is there, however, and is one of the reasons why uh, the best thinking that we do must be done when we are in a state of internal composure. The stresses through which we pass, pass nearly always afflict our ability to see clearly. And the word clairvoyance means basically to see clearly. Now to see clearly on a rational level alone is to appear to possess supernatural power. If we ever use our faculties as they were intended to be used, we become rather intelligent creatures. And the intelligent creature can weigh and estimate the consequences of action. As we lock ourselves away from this simple intelligence, uh, we overlook important truths that should be Im immediately available to us. Someone came to me with a dream that worried them very gravely. They had two sons, fine upcoming young men. And one night, uh, this person had the dream that these two sons were coming home or returning to the family for some celebration, such as Christmas or Thanksgiving. And along the way, they passed through a serious storm. And in this storm, the ground became very treacherous. And in this treacherous quicksand-like ground, these two boys sank and died. Naturally, the parent was gravely perturbed and wondered whether this was a true warning that these boys' lives were in danger. In the course of some months, no factual incident to corroborate the dream occurred. In fact, none ever occurred. And that was a number of years ago. But what was happening was different. This mother was an extremely possessive uh, person, well-intentioned in every way, but instinctively holding on too firmly upon the lives of these two young men. Apparently, this symbolism of coming back to the family for a celebration was a fulfillment of the mother's desire to prevent these two boys from going out into the world and living their own lives. She wanted them to come back. He wanted to continually protect them and to supply them and to spoil them. And as a result of that, uh, she was preparing to drown them in the quicksand of her own emotional possessiveness. Something inside of her was telling her that if these boys came back, returned again to her influence, 
they would be at storm, a struggle for their own independence, and that finally their individuality would be destroyed and they would sink into this quicksand of the acceptances of her domination. This was being told to her by her own inner insight. Yet in her conscious mind, she was so desirous of continuing to have the pleasure of trying in her way to direct these young men that she did not for a moment suspect that anything that she could wish for them, anything she could do for them or to them, could hurt them in any way. Yet she was on the very edge of causing them to lose their individual existence. Later, this proved to be true. And when a conflict did arise and one of these young men wished to get married, the mother developed an intense hysteria over the whole thing. The dream became meaningful, and when interpreted, the real facts, began to reveal themselves, and fortunately the mother was able to sense this meaning, which she knew inside was true, and took hold of herself and uh, prevented the psychological uh, drowning of these young men. So that the dream uh, warned something. It was a premonition, but it was not a literal or factual premonition. This is a very important guide because it so serves two purposes. First, it shows that the dream does have a meaning. The second is it protects us from the danger of literalizing the symbolism and then feeling that there was no meaning because the physical events do not occur. Just as the mass is ill fortune dream simply signifies the negativeness in ourselves. So many particular dreams indicate our tendencies, habits, or things we are doing which are leading us into trouble. Most persons in the course of life sense when something is wrong. Yet in this sensing, they do not clearly uh, analyze the situation and honestly react to it in a normal manner. They become highly defensive and protective. They bring out more and more energy to sustain their own purpose, thus hastening what uh, the dream intimates as a calamity of some kind. If then we have dreams that relate uh, to some emergency, to those around us, we should do very well to understand our relationship with these other persons, to discover, if possible, what kind of an adroit scheme we are holding in relation to those persons. For usually there is a little scheme of some kind, a scheme which to us is perfectly reasonable and normal a scheme which we do not sense as dishonest, but which perhaps is ethically not really honest. It is much of the same type of thing as intense competitiveness in business. We justify competition because apparently everyone practices it, and without it we are unable to survive. In the name of competition, we do things that are not ethically correct. At the same time, we may break no physical law, nor subject ourselves to any legal action. We are just not quite honest. And in personal relationships, this is a very common circumstance. We do not honestly estimate that which we too greatly love. We do not honestly estimate that which we too deeply hate. Wherever the emotions and attitudes and imaginations of the individual become involved, common sense, factual thinking, realization and reality 
depart. The only way that we can perhaps save ourselves from the consequences is to listen to the internal value that lies locked in our own soul. If, for example, we have been taught by our religion or hold it to be true by our conviction that a certain measure of unselfishness is necessary for a truly moral, ethical life, and we become too selfish in our relationship, then the psychological disturbance resulting from this may cause symbolic dreams. The dream in this case, then, is a conflict dream, a dream between two levels of our own understanding, a, a dream in which compromise is exposed in its true light as being unfair or unreasonable or unkind, even though we may consciously deny such to be the case. Therefore, I think we must acknowledge or respect the fact that the average person is more honest when he relaxes than when he is under tension. Tension creates a kind of moral astigmatism. The individual easily overlo overlooks principles when his own interests are involved. Yet psychologically, man is striving for internal health. Nature wishes to maintain his equilibrium. Nature wants the person to be right. And rightness, in this case, is that this person shall be true to himself as he understands himself. That he shall make no compromise that is detrimental to his peace of mind, his emotional integrity, or his physical health. Under these conditions, the internal or subconscious part of man becomes an instructor, more or less giving advice, mildly correcting or chastising, or if the condition is very imminent and urgent, coming forth very firmly with some warning, a warning that arises from the result of man's inward life becoming too inconsistent, too divided, and to that degree endangering the total unity or integration of the personality. This leads to the next situation. Uh, we know that there are what are called prodromic dreams. These are the symptomological dreams. They are known to exist. The individual, in various degrees of health problems, does dream in a diagnostic way. Some way, the internal chemistry of man, particularly when this chemistry has been attacked by the inroads of disease, affects the entire psychic life. Sickness not consciously felt in the body is already subconsciously felt in the psyche. One of the reasons for this may well be that disturbance of the psyche is the cause of the sickness. And this disturbance, which has perhaps remained for some time on the psychological level, begins to intrude itself upon physical function or structure. This an increasing hazard uh, to the total integration of the person, creates psychological, mental, emotional stress patterns of a peculiar nature. These patterns can become intuitively known. They can be sensed before they occur. Inasmuch as a symptom, for example, uh, will announce perhaps more than the symptom itself implies, because the symptom carries with it the overtone of what will occur if the symptom is not corrected. It is a warning, and once it appears and is adequately diagnosed, the whole cause, uh, course of an ailment can be anticipated. Therefore, a symptom may arise early. 
And usually symptoms do arise in time for the individual to take some kind of step if the symptom is duly noted. Psychologically, symptoms are known uh, uh, earlier than they are physically. The physical system, even though it is extremely sensitive, is not in nearly as sensitive as the psychic organism. And by the time certain uh, symptoms have worked their way out into our physical objective consciousness and we become aware of them, by that time a great deal of symptomology has already occurred that was cognized only by the subconscious part of ourselves. I think this may have been one of the uh, explanations of the old clinics of the god Asclepius, the Greek god of healing. These clinics strongly emphasized dream diagnosis. And the patient was brought into the temple, given a sleeping herb of some kind, a narcotic, a mild one. And then, in his sleep, the deity seemed to appear to him and diagnose the ailment. Also, sometimes, uh, recommending strongly the therapy indicated. Primarily, this undoubtedly was the unlocking of man's own interior power to know the condition of himself. When this has to break through in dreams again, it may very well do so symbolically. The, the, the event may not be exactly what the dream seems to mean. But there is a valid relationship capable of interpretation. A classic example of that, which I have mentioned uh, in uh, some of our writings, is the story of the man who had the dream that he was swimming in an ocean of blood and a few days later had a very dangerous hemorrhage. This particular dream certainly was a diagnostic one. The psyche knew what was coming because the causes of this circumstance were already at work within the body, although the person was not aware of it. One of the reasons why the psyche might have had this awareness is because the psyche was able to judge the nature of the person, the nature of his actions, his previous conduct in certain matters, perhaps habits or practices that weakened the body, or some previous sudden exertion which endangered the body and made this hemorrhage especially likely. Also the possibility of the psyche picking up a matter of infection or a matter of the gradual development of a disease within the body that the conscious person had not yet realized. Consequently, there is not only in this case the personal factor of a subconscious with an awareness beyond the conscious, and the fact that awareness bestows an increasing area of prophetic power. We call it prophecy, but actually it is awareness of facts, present or impending. Facts that have perfectly mathematical formulas and are developing and unfolding in natural sequences which can therefore be examined by anyone who has the interior insight to make the examination. Many people do not make the examination. Many persons being afraid that their symptoms may mean something disregard them in order to preserve for a little while the freedom from the oppression of an unhappy diagnosis. But the psyche senses all of these things. We may also note very definitely uh, what is now coming to be more recognized and which we have talked about for so many years, namely that we must consider nations and races and collective groups as uh, individual psyches. 
we must face the psychopolitical fact that the folk or the people of a unit or culture group constitute a psychological entity. These people may not be consciously aware of a course of circumstances affecting their country or affecting their nation or their race or their culture. But there is no reason to say that the subconscious of these groups, that this subconscious nature is not aware of the inevitable consequences of group policy and that the attitudes of people, their intolerance or their various pressures these will in turn affect the political life of these people. And on the same basis as the prodromic dream, there is no reason to doubt that predictions about nations can be made. Predictions which seem fantastic, and yet which arise not in a miracle or in some unknown sensory perception, but simply arise from the fact that man is capable of greater thoughtfulness in these matters than he realizes, and that this greater thoughtfulness is nearly always obscured by some superficial false thinking of his own. Thus denying the hazards, denying the dangers, or ignoring them, he permits them to gather around him and increase, and he strengthens the dangers until finally the psychic integration breaks through with some kind of a warning. Nature has a tendency to warn things. Nature does not wish them to fall into disaster. In fact, a large part of the sensory structure of man is defensive, intended to assist him in the protect protection of his life and his liberty and his happiness. It is his own tendency, tendency to ignore this a helpful part that nature has provided that causes him to have more and more trouble. Nature trying to break through with one of these prophetic experiences usually chooses the sleep period. Although under certain stress, nature may assert itself even in waking hours. But the sleep period merely means the period in which the self-will of the individual is subordinated. These experiences, which may be a clear statement of a real truth, these experiences come when the defense mechanism of opinion and attitude have been temporarily uh, suspended. Thus, we have the uh, extended realization that as sleep merely represents the temporary relief from psychic stress, that the person in his daily living who can consciously relieve himself of this stress can relax and become quietly, thoughtfully receptive to basic ideas, uh, will usually be able to discover what he needs to know. And it is the tension under which we operate that actually permits us to make mistakes. If we were relaxed, if we were thoughtful, if we were uh, conscientious in our tracing through the patterns of our own conduct, we would be able to save ourselves innumerable uh, tragic hours. Uh, we have the power, but now... This power only operates when we get out of the way of our own self-interest, which is a false self-interest because it is not helping us, it is hurting us. It is merely fulfilling our desire. It is not supporting our needs. This leads us to another possible level of the explanation of this type of phenomena. We have not yet approached anything that resembles the mystical or the mysterious. We know that certain persons, highly trained, recognize ailments more quickly than those untrained. And these ailments not only mean physical ones, but anything which has a tendency to disturb the order of our lives 
or endanger the normalcy of our existence. We know that it is perfectly possible to detect uh, from the general structure of a person, from his reactions to certain tests, how he is likely to fare in this world. We know that if he flunks certain tests, he will have troubles throughout life. The troubles are not the result of flunking the test. The troubles are the result of the condition of himself. And the flunking of the test is merely a demonstration of his own condition. Thus, the entire psychic integration of the individual as he is gives us a very clear and concise insight as to what is most likely to happen to him. And because the details of his character help to define the details of events likely to occur, we can come very close to a remarkably accurate prophecy about someone, merely as a result of the daily exhibition that that person makes of the attributes of his disposition. We know that certain attitudes will have certain consequences. We may not be able to date the consequence, but we are fully aware that it will occur. And sometimes it occurs more rapidly than we realize. This being due in turn to the fact that often, because we are not greatly observant, we do not notice the symptoms until they are very pronounced. And the more pronounced the symptom, the more rapidly the consequence will be manifested. If we could uh, perceive the symptom at its very beginning, we might be able to say it will be ten years before this symptom will produce any more effect. But if we are already eight years along the process of this symptom building up, before it becomes sufficiently clear for us to sense, then the symptoms will produce their consequences in two years because it is measured from the time in which we become aware of them. The most satisfactory solution to this whole problem, of course, and the lesson that it tries to teach us is that we should search for these indications ourselves, that we should become as mindful as we can not in terms of watching for impending trouble, but in becoming keenly aware of processes which can cause trouble, correcting them ourselves, and placing a long-range strategy in our minds. We so frequently forget that time passes rapidly, and an individual at 20 told that a certain course of action will make him ill at 40, is very likely to say, well, remind me at 39 and I'll do something about it. This is our thinking. After all, we have 20 years to do as we please, and then we can start a new strategy of some kind. So we do not uh, give very immediate thought to remote happenings. But these 20 years go by with unbelievable rapidity, and suddenly that impending event has lived its life and has come to its fruition, and suddenly we are faced with it. By that time, it may have progressed to a degree we can do very little about it. This putting off of necessary changes in ourselves is a very false way uh, to seek pleasure, happiness, or comfort, because these purposes of nature will undoubtedly uh, assert themselves with almost mathematical finality. All these processes we sense, we are only now beginning to place them into the terms of a science. Only now are we permitting the things we have known and always known uh, to have a distinct part in the regulation of our outward affairs. The process is still in its infancy, but we are, we are gaining on it gradually.
the psychosomatic relationship between certain policies and health, or the relationship between character and the probabilities, for example, of successful marriage, the relationship between inner maturity and our ability to direct the lives of our children, these things are certain and factual. But we are not always willing to face them. Uh, but subconsciously, they build up toward their own inevitable conclusions. Most of our psychic stress is due to this conflict between the surface purposes of the individual and the subconscious facts which are constantly trying to impress him, trying to come through into consciousness in order that he may take advantage of the truth that they reveal. Now, there are several other possible degrees to be considered here. There are other phases of this matter, influence from other persons, and how this influence may appear through dreams to be prophetic. But uh, all in all, the average person who comes under dream analysis or deals with this phase of his own inner life is not essentially a prophet. He is not basically a mystic, no matter what he wants to think about this. He is really a person uh, of comparatively imperfect attainment, who is in need of immediate help in the most simple and commonplace occurrences. The individual who thinks he is far beyond uh, these problems of ordinary mortals suddenly finds himself confronted with a broken home or sees his business evaporating through poor management. It has not occurred to him that such things could happen to him. He believes that he has gone far beyond this in his internal insight, but he has falsely weighed his own attainment. And I think it is wise in the view of this to assume that the average person does not have available extrasensory faculties which may normally be the explanation of unusual occurrences. What he calls extrasensory faculties are really his own true faculties, which he has not been willing to acknowledge, or which he has misinterpreted. And the voice that comes is not the voice of an angel. It is the voice of his own desperately afflicted nature, trying to correct him trying to bring him in line with reality, trying to help him uh, to find himself in the midst of erroneous uh, conclusions about himself, which, if continued, would merely get him further and further into trouble. This type can be examined and amplified and books can be written relating to these phases of the situation. But we must also bear in mind that there are certain evidences of premonitional, premonitional or warning experiences which do not con conveniently fit into these suggest suggested uh, causations. There are others which bear upon other values. One of the most difficult of these to analyze is the so-called dated dream, or the vision in which an occurrence, an occurrence is clearly located in its time sequence. An individual has a certain kind of dream that is not essentially personal. A dream uh, perhaps such as that of a small boy who had a very clear and vivid dream of the great earthquake disaster at Martinique years ago. This child sat up in the night screaming and described the occurrence. And a day or two later, Martinique was struck exactly as this boy had seen. Now, he had no interest in Martinique. He probably did not know it existed. He had no reason to suddenly become so highly sensitive 
and to prevision even the details of this disaster. Our psychological explanation of this, such as we have previously advanced, is simply not adequate. On the other hand, the explanation for this type of uh, prognostic dream should not be merely enlarged and made to cover all the others. The fact that this boy had undoubtedly an authentic example of premonitional dreams does not mean that all other dreams are authentically premonitional, nor that the faculties used by this boy are the same faculties that are used by the individual in a dream of another disaster which does not occur. We must face, therefore, that dream phenomena of this nature can arise from several causes. And we must try to analyze a little, at least, the genuine prophetic dream, which, as far as we can determine, cannot be explained by psychic disturbance within the person. This type of dream is usually impersonal, but it can also be personal. But where it is personal, it is so exact that the individual, uh, whether he accepts the dream or not, will nearly always experience what it suggests. This type of prophetic dream also has a different dimension in its presentation. The truly prophetic dream usually is not symbolical. It is literal. It describes the event exactly as it is. It is not something that is forced to fight its way through the symbol-making mechanism of our own consciousness. And from the general study of it and what its procedures seem to be, there is much to indicate that it represents a direct impact from some source outside of the psychic mechanism of the individual. This, of course, leads immediately to the psychological consideration of such things as telepathy, extrasensory perception, the possibility of true and valid foreknowledge about events which are to occur. Now, the foreknowledge type of dream suggests, again, more than one possible explanation. The foreknowledge type of dream can be like the one which we mentioned of the man who dreamed that he was in or uh, was swimming in the sea of blood, and the hemorrhage followed a few days later. Now, this is a microcosmic example, a little example, of a dream which was prophetic, though not entirely literal, yet so nearly literal uh, that even the element of blood appeared as a clue to the entire situation. This has to mean that in the life of that person, his own inner consciousness had become aware of a situation that was impending. Therefore, there must be 